and welcome to Brand New 2020 Chat Show, a show for small business owners and creative entrepreneurs to help you build your brand, boost your business, and grow your audience. I'm Olivia from Shoot and Share. I'm your personal branding photographer. Hi, and I'm Tam, the brand designer. Joining us today on the show is Emily and Alan Braithwaite from Yellow Tuxedo, and we're going to be discussing how to optimize your videos for YouTube. Hi, guys. Big Hi. welcome to the show. Hi, uh, Hi how hello, how are you both? Very good, thanks. Yeah, good. Well, you know what? We, we love um, really lovely business successful stories, which is why we invited you guys on the show, because I believe that your story can inspire uh, a lot of business owners out there. So, uh, Emily, your skill sets are into events and development and training. And Alan, you come from the sort of the corporate, the brand growth with a bit of an emphasis on technology. So I believe that the two of you created two businesses, which have now becoming, uh, have become quite international brands. So we've got the Bay Lily Bell Tents and the Outside Brides, um, which I think is a blog for, for brides and, and, and weddings. But then you created Yellow Tuxedo. Can you explain to us why you created your Yellow Tuxedo and what kind of services you guys provide? Absolutely. Do you want to take that one? Uh, yeah, okay. That's, uh, so, um, it, actually, it, it was kind of, if we're brutally honest, some of these stories, you know, just kind of happen without a real plan behind them. Um, we, we, we'd started our other two businesses and we were growing them online and we were doing what we do with content, etc, etc. And um, then a friend of ours, our, our accountant, actually, she said, you do know, no one else knows how to do what you two are doing with your business in our kind of peer group, networking group. And we went, no, I've got no idea what you're talking about. Because we used to sit there and go, why is no one else doing this? And we couldn't get our head around it. And our accountant at the time, Kathy, was like, yeah, no one else knows. And, you know, we, 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 we were looking for a kind of, I say looking for another business. That sounds really stupid. But, you know, you know we we've spent eight years on the other ones. We, we were kind of looking to a, a new new project yeah mm -hmm. and um to fill up the entire year because bay lily bell tents is very summer orientated and so we started yellow tuxedo really and and now we we show other people how to do and you know to grow online and stand out it, in the crowd it's kind of like we we spent eight years trying to do everything that wasn't in our previous background in the marketing and branding and training all that kind of stuff we were doing beforehand and we swiftly found ourselves falling into that trap when we were marketing our businesses using those that skill set that we had before and actually looking at how we could develop it a bit with bay, bay lily the outside bride and then yeah yellow tuxedo was born yeah so, so, so in fact it's taking all your knowledge um that you've learned from your two other businesses putting it into packages to help other businesses yeah owning a small business is tough running a small business is tough and we all know what we know but everything else the bit you know you don't know and the bit you don't know you don't know is actually really hard work and and now we want to kind of yeah you know it's, the, it's, help those, it's those practical elements we all know that we need to market we all know that we need to do youtube we're talking to today we know we need to do facebook and sometimes those technical details you just cannot get your head around or yep. because it's not your zone of genius and yep. actually we want to be able to control our, our own business and do it in that way but sometimes you just need that little bit of help to go yeah. show us how to do it so what exactly what kind of service do you actually provide like do you concentrate on just social media do you concentrate on sort of marketing um business strategy what 
So Yellow Tuxedo is about online presence. So we, we kind of feel it's a new umbrella to it because, you know, you would engage with an SEO company. You may, you know, outsource your social media management. You may, you know, there's other parts to it, sort of content creation and everything else. At Yellow Tuxedo, we support all of that. And we either show you how to do it so you can go and do it yourself or we do it for you, basically. Mm. The importance is that SEO and social media together, they, they work hand in hand. They, they, do, they are... Uh, a relationship that needs to be nurtured and used together. Brilliant. And you, I mean, you've told us about a success story with using YouTube with your Bay Lily Bell tents, which mm. was quite a lovely story to listen to. And um, that's obviously what our focus is on today is YouTube and how to optimize that for, for your marketing use. So with over 2 billion views a day, YouTube is the second most visited site in the world. Um, and it's grown over the years to become such a powerful tool that it feels essential for business owners looking to reach a larger audience to start incorporating videos into their marketing strategy. Um, Emily and Alan, how do you, how do we know if YouTube is right for our business and the right solution to use as a tool? Yeah. yeah. Well, the important thing is that we always talk about ideal client and Anna has a lot to talk about ideal client usually. We won't get into that today because we'll be here for hours. Um, but in terms of where we think our clients sit and what platforms they will be on, we think we, we, we do our avatar and we think they sit on Facebook or Instagram or whatever. You may th not think that your client sits on YouTube, but sure as hell they will be sitting on Google. They will be using Google to search for things, for, for their, your services, for your products. And obviously with YouTube being the second biggest player on the market, it's actually owned by Google. That's why it's so successful because it is owned by Google. Um, it's not a it's not a social media platform. It's a social search engine. That's People true. are using it every single day. The numbers you just said there, Tam. People are using it every single day to solve a problem. Just like we would optimize our content for Google and our websites, we do the same exactly the same thing with YouTube. And I think people don't realize how powerful that is as a tool. And whether you're using YouTube for people to visit to you, or you're using YouTube and they're, they're finding your videos on the Google search um, platforms, or whether you're using it just to host your videos to save the bandwidth on your website, it's such a powerful powerful valuable tool that it's just not used enough by some of the businesses we work with and actually it's quite eye-opening isn't it when the people do realize how much power they're yeah, yeah, absolutely. It and how it can be used. I, I, I do say that any business can be using YouTube for their business and it will pay dividends so yeah so YouTube I mean being such a massive platform that you've just described um, it can be quite daunting and I'm assuming as well the competition can be quite fierce so any businesses wanting to venture it would probably have to spend a little bit of time creating good content and, and getting the right resources. So do we need some kind of YouTube strategy to be able to be successful in, in venturing into creating our own channel? Uh, um the, the answer is yes, right? But it doesn't need to be as that complicated, you know, as having your own bespoke YouTube strategy. As Emily talked about, one of, one of the kind of entry levels is, Everyone needs to create video, right? Everyone's got a smartphone. Everyone should be creating video. It's the most engaged with type of content, okay? And so if you're gonna create video, you need somewhere to keep it. And that's YouTube, right? There's no point keeping it anywhere else because it's not doing anything for you. So whether you have a specific strategy to be able to grow on YouTube or whether you're just gonna create some content that you're gonna share around your website and your social media that lives on YouTube that can then be found because it's optimized, it, it, it's it's fine, you know. So that strategy could be that one sentence. I'm going to host my video content on YouTube, but I film with my phone for, so people can find it. So it's working for you. And that's one of the big things we talk about Yellow Tuxedo. We want your content to work for you because when you're just posting on Facebook and Instagram, it's, it's not working for you as hard as content posted in it's other places. Evergreen. It's not evergreen like it can be on YouTube. And also in terms of that strategy and how it looks on a wider picture, um, we, we all have content, we have marketing strategies, we have social media strategies, exactly the same, same thing as applies to, um, to YouTube. Um, when we think about optimizing, and we'll cover optimizing later on, but we always think about our keyword strategy for how we're optimizing our content and our websites and all our pages and stuff. That exact same structure works for YouTube in this exact same way. So we need to do some research into what people are searching for. Yes, it, competition is fierce, and yes, there are a lot of people putting YouTube out there, but if you think about your keyword strategy for SEO and what you want to come up with for page one of Google, yes, uh, you use a wedding planner. There are lots, hundreds of thousands of wedding planners, but it's finding your niche in the industry, what words you want to come up for, how you're going to be found, N knowing your customer and how they want to search for you is really important. And that same thing applies to YouTube and your strategy there as well. Yeah, it's just a quick example of that. It's like um, our Bailey Bell Tense video you alluded to. If we'd have called that 
Bay Lily Bell tents put up a tent, no one would have found it. But we didn't. We called it how to put up a tent because that's what people are searching for. Yeah. So, you know, that's how, how that's where the start of the optimization yeah, it's answering is. Answering the questions that people are already asking. Yeah. That's a great point. Um, and then obviously, we've, you know, we're thinking about all the content that you're putting in there. Are there certain types of videos that you can create to cover this content? that we're creating for our niche market? Yeah, 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 sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. As a, as a small business, what you want to be doing, or any business really, unless you've got, unless you've got a massive following, if you, you're trying to grow, then you wanna be answering questions. And, and that's really simple, people go, oh, what questions? You answer the questions people ask you, you answer the questions you find in groups, you answer the questions, you know, every client says, oh, could you answer these questions for me, please? And, mm -hmm. um, you know, in our wedding world, we. we we used to call it like the planning sessions on a Sunday night uh, the, the engaged couple would sit there chatting and planning their wedding and it was the questions we reckon they would be asking each other in that time mm -hmm. you know with Bay Lily Bell tents the how to put up a, bit, a tent video that came because we were in some glamping groups and there was 10,000 conversations a day on how do you put your tent up how do I do this how do I do that and we're like well boom that, there's our content mm -hmm. right there and you know and so that's you, you answer those questions when you grow a following then it can be more about what you're thinking and you want to share more about yourself but to get started we highly recommend you start answering mm. questions and the good thing about um youtube as a platform is that you can try and test different models of videos so yes the how-to videos work really well for our particular business it might be that you're doing a bit more of a talk to camera a bit more of an interview style like we're doing today it could be that you're doing a, a product launch and you're doing guides we've seen photographers goes. do equipment and guides the good thing is that. you can yeah. try and tweak that there's there's no one's going to tell you that's the wrong thing but like every other kind of metric we look at on any of our other social media it's understanding your figures and looking at your viewing habits when people are picking things up what are, what's resonating more than the other thing you know mm. you, and you can swap things out and if they're really really no not that they're not, nothing's ever going to be damaging to you you can just take them down if they're not going to work you yeah. take them down mm. but i think you have the ability to chop and change and see what works with your audience and then whatever's doing well we branch yeah. out and do more of yeah. all right and um, and then obviously creating all these videos is there any fancy equipment that i need to create any of these videos that you want? Yep. Yours isn't Real. yellow. Put it oh, down. That. Put it down. You're not in brand. Yeah. Yeah, not. You're not. Do you know what? I would love to have a yellow phone. However, we would know. Yeah, know we would know. Uh, um, no, no, you, you don't, right? So it is as simple as long as you've got a vaguely good smartphone. So we do believe you should invest in your technology, right? So if you're running your small business or your business, it doesn't really matter what size your business is. If you're running it on old tech you're gonna be limited, right? In productivity, uh, in operationally, and in creativity, right? So, sorry for saying right about five times. <laughs> so what you need, you need to invest in your technology. This is only an iPhone XR. It's not the latest and greatest, but it is relatively up to date. And then being a, have a, a computer that can cope with that. Um, we don't film in 4K and everything else, because our devices can't cope with that, but it can cope with 1080p HD as we all know it on the TV, mm. you know. So you, you have to have vaguely up-to-date equipment. And we see a lot of businesses running, um, um, you know, running these old laptops where it takes 20 minutes to load up. And it's like, how are you ever going to be productive? And we understand there's, you know, money risk constraints and everything else, but, th but that should be a primary investment when you're starting. When you want to grow from there, yeah, it's quite simple. Get a tripod, right? It, it, like 20 pound, 25 pound starting price on Amazon. You can get some lights, um, you can get a microphone and, and you can start growing. But to get started, getting started is the main thing. I would say, yes, as, as you go, sound and lighting are really key because every, no one wants to watch something that's really echoey and tinny. So if you can invest in, in the first bit, a decent either lapel mic or a road mic, you know, that you can have over, over your, um, your phone, you can get all the nice clips and hooks and stuff to put them in. That's always a good investment to have. And simply, if you haven't got fancy lighting, like we're doing today, sitting in front of a window, making sure that the natural light is on your face, that you're not in shadow, that, that's all you really need to get started. Yeah. And absolutely, see what works, see how it changes to your business, and then adapt and change and buy things as you... Yeah, but the, the keys to get started because when we're talking about optimized content, the sooner it's out there, the sooner it starts working for you. So if yeah. you spend a long time planning it, planning it, you're you're wasting time. Just yeah. an opportunity. Start. Really and nice. and uh, sorry, uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right, go on. I, I was going to say, you know, you got it's it's 
okay to pick up your phone and film. Jamie Oliver's just done an entire TV yeah. series mm -hmm. uh, during lockdown, filmed by his wife Jules on their mobile phones. They've just mm -hmm. done an entire TV. And if it's okay for Jamie Oliver, it's okay for the rest of us. Yeah, because yeah. we're all celebrities really deep now. <laughs> but, uh, so don't get, don't get stuck too much on the details, just get going with your content. And as you grow, then you can then maybe either invest and, and look up uh, everything around it. So once you've started filming and you've created, you're starting to create your content, um, you're gonna kind of need to launch your channel. Do you need some kind of launching um, plan to get your channel seen really? And what, what so would that, you advise? Yeah, that, that's, that's like all content really. All content on all platforms likes a bit of a kickstart, a jumpstart. So whether you're launching a blog or you're, you know, you're launching something on social media or a video, it, it, it's good to kind of share that out as far and wide as yeah. possible. And if yeah. you're doing helpful content, People are going to have less of an issue seeing it. You, you feel less spammy, um, you know, because, of, well, I'm helping people. So how can, how can this be a problem if I'm posting this in these groups that I, I engage with? The key part to all of this is be social. If yeah. you're not being social on social platforms, then it's not doing anything. So make sure you're engaging with others because then others start to engage with your content. Make sure it is engaging in its own way. And then, you know, people are going to start to click on it. I would say on YouTube that they, the algorithm quite likes like um, consistency. So if you are going to post and, and create regularly, then setting a time and a date and posting at the same time, YouTube does yeah. like that. Yeah. Okay. It's like yeah. a routine machine then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it's routine. Yeah. yeah. But that's kind of good as well. And because we're also time poor with our work anyway, with our content strategy. Actually, by setting that designated time, so we have a video that we put out every single week on a Wednesday. Um, and we'll, we'll, we like to batch content. It doesn't always happen, but we like to batch content. But we'll make sure that our workflow and routine is that, that the, um, and we'll, we, we like to repurpose as well, but we'll create the video, we'll create the blog that goes with the video, we'll have it all set up to go and share on, uh, on social media. And then on a Wednesday, it all goes live. And yeah. that helps us with our structure because mm -hmm. the moment you know, I'm in YouTube mode now. You kind of you have that time set of it, like recording today. You know, we have to have that structure of when we did it, otherwise it never happens. And yeah. it, it's it's just yeah, workflow is so so yeah. important. So, so the last thing I would say on the launch, um, YouTube like anything on the internet, it wants to know where to put you. So you need to give it information. Otherwise it goes, oh, I don't know where to put this. So that's by optimizing it through the title, through the tags, mm -hmm. ensuring that the country and the language and everything else is set, then it knows where to put you. Yeah. So any business owners venturing into the video production world and the YouTube channel will expect some kind of a return on investment. Are there other ways to maximize the videos we're producing in other parts of our marketing? Absolutely. So we, we always call this macro content at the end of the day. Anything that's video or a blog or something that's chunky is macro content. We love it because you have so much more power with it to do other things with. So whether you create a video and then you choose to um, get it transcribed and then you create a blog post out of that, fantastic. We can create snippets. We can do um, full videos like we are today, where it's a full interview. You can do um, 30 second teasers to go on Instagram. You can put it everywhere. We have that power to put things everywhere. We can embed it into a blog post. We can put this video onto your mail mailing list. So this can be going out to your audience that you already have in your mailing list. There are so many things. Alan actually did a video in, on our YouTube channel the other day. Was it 19 ways to repurpose a video? Uh, 19 ways to repurpose a YouTube video and we didn't even exhaust it there was more we could have put on the list and the, the, the good thing is that this evergreen content this macro content it sits there forever when you have a facebook post or an instagram post within hours you know it's hours it gets lost down that feed and it's gone forever mm -hmm. there's nothing to say though that those facebook lives you do and those videos cannot be repurposed for a video on youtube there are lots of arguments going don't do that they're not for different they're for different platforms but if you have a quality piece of, of content there that you're not spending every two seconds hygiene hire you know when you do that on, on a facebook we always talk to everyone but if it's a really good video where you are delivering a point very succinctly and you're offering training or a point or a how to, there's nothing to say that you can't download that, download that video and put it onto YouTube. It's yeah. vice versa. It's, we're, it's we're maximizing every bit of content. Yeah, it's better to have it doing something for you than just doing one bit and disappearing. Yeah. You know, yeah, repurpose, reuse, make your life easy. We're all busy. Make your life easy. Yeah, I mean, talking about busy, um, I mean, how much time does it really take? I mean... You guys are a bit techie savvy. 
you know, I can be a little bit techie savvy as well and I can edit my own video. But for most business that don't have the, you know, knowledge of running softwares and editing videos, I mean, how much time does all that take um, to create the one, the original content to then split it into 10 different snippets, best of, or whatever? That takes a lot of time. How much time should you dedicate? Um, that's a really, really good question. And ultimately, it's once you have that skill set and knowledge, and obviously this is what we do to help people with, with the business anyway, we like to give people that practical knowledge. It doesn't have to take that much time. And again, as once you, when you get into routine and habit of knowing what you're doing, it can take, like on our, um, our Wednesday launch, we launch to all of our platforms, we do our blog posts, we do our YouTube launch, all of that. It takes us about an hour and a hour to an hour and a half on a weekly basis. That's obviously with us having that tech savvy sort of knowledge behind us. But when you're creating your videos, you don't have to have a really intricate, nice cutaway to this, nice cutaway to that, and have all the editing. All you really need is the main bulk of your content, a good intro and a good outro, which is quite similar. When you're looking at even the most basic of editing softwares, we use... Um, Final Cut Pro with um, for Apple, we're Apple guys. There's, I mean, I, there's I mean, iMovie. iMovie, the free one's absolutely there, there's, acceptable. There's Splice, which is a free app. There is um, Da Vinci. Um, they're really, really easy to find. They're literally drag and drop, drag and drop, yeah. drag and drop. There you're done, and they're rendered and done. It doesn't have to be as intricate. But that's again the, the stuff that we we build on, and uh, we start to invest in ourselves and learn a bit more mm. as you go. And it becomes yeah. so much quicker the more you do it. Mm. The only one thing I would say is sorry it's like your rhythms and routines so you've got to market your business somehow so you've got you're going to have to invest time in your marketing yeah. so yeah. what do you deem marketing whether you spend an hour on a on a pdf to go on a magazine or you want to spend a few hours on a video that you're going to be able to repurpose 20 times and re and more than that because of if you're answering questions it's going to be there forever you know so you, you've got to market somehow you've got to invest that time somehow so how are you going to do it and actually it takes less it it. sorry it takes less time in our week because actually by creating Creating the macro content like that and having that purpose behind that, it helps feed our micro content platforms as well. So all of a sudden, we're not having to spend hours going, oh my God, I've got to do my five Facebook posts this week and I now I need to do Instagram. I'm, I, I have to put something out there. Mm. We already know what our micro content is going to be because we theme the week around that bit of macro content. And then before, during and after, we kind of create the, the content. So it actually becomes a lot quicker because we're not having to then think of new stuff, thinking outside the box, because that's our framework in the, at, the, at the very start. Yeah, I, I also heard that a lot of people, what they're doing is they'll dedicate one day a month and they'll do all their filming <laughs> in one day. Uh, and then they've got the month to then slowly distribute it. Uh, so another time costing sort of... Yeah, batch content yeah, yeah. is really, really clever. Yeah, it's, it's all about the time, money, health triangle, isn't it? You, you, in a perfect world, you'll have time, money and health, but you don't always have all three. Yeah. So you have to work, you have to balance it how it works for you. Yeah. You know, um, w without, you know, we have a service where you can film your content and send it to us and we'll edit it, produce it and upload it and share it out as macro content. So it's all about what works for you and your business and your life yeah. and everything else. Yeah, perfect. Right. So when you're creating your channel, you also create what's called your, so you create your YouTube channel, but then that's also your page, I guess. Is that how it works? Can you talk us through how we should be managing that channel? Just sort of the steps for a beginner on YouTube. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I actually love, obviously with the lockdown, everyone, and a lot of people have started creating a lot more video content, which is amazing. We're, it makes us really quite happy and warm inside, doesn't it? Because people are embracing the platform. What we see time and time again is people are rushing to YouTube without actually thinking about mm -hmm. the process process behind you and, and that psychology about what people what people are going to click on so looking at your channel and yes absolutely it's, it's your page it's your it's your shop window is making sure that your channel art is inspiring it's something people represent with you so if you have your channel art on your facebook page or your instagram or anything else making sure that's consistent across all of your platforms making sure that you have an opportunity there to put a little intro video introduce people to what your channel is tell people what your channel is going, going to be helping them with and then looking at things like your cover art you're a big one on cover art aren't you you you, love, you spent ages well i was going to give a bit more technical about this so yeah yeah cover art is called so one of the metrics on youtube is click through rate so that's basically how many impressions your video has compared to how many people have clicked on it and cover art is arguably the single most important thing in helping people decide whether to click on your video or not. And anything over 4% is great. And if you go into the video analytics reach, you start to look at these things. Mm -hmm. and, and so 
you have to think about how right so one of the biggest flaws or problems in selling is shopping for yourself however you still have to think about the psychology of what you may do and when you're on YouTube looking at something you love what do you look at how do you choose a video type in if you're a photographer wedding photographer look at the front page look at all the cover arts and go well these are the most popular ones what are they doing how can I do that but be fractionally different mm -hmm. so when it comes to your channel and as you say that's your home page your channel that's no different to any other platform and having your page or you know mm -hmm. your account or whatever else but there are things you can do. So yeah, you can make it look pretty. And remember in the Yellow Tuxedo Online Presence Strategy, YouTube is an entry into your ecosystem. So once they're there, you need to make sure the journey to the rest of yeah. your world is, is you know, succinct and consistent. So that's about making sure there's links to your website. You can put some links in the cover art. That's about the video. That's about the descriptions of each video. Mm. Um, and there was a third, bit. and playlist. Playlists are mm. keyword mm. optimizable, so therefore searchable. If you type in 90s music, one of the first things it will offer you is a playlist. It won't offer you just single video, a play. So playlists are optimizable as well. Mm. And the more playlists within reason you put on your front page the more of your content you're allowing to be found is a playlist a virtual playlist mm -hmm. so if I create for example for brand new 2020 I've created a, a marketing playlist a business playlist uh, and a branding one mm -hmm. that would be so anybody else who's created a playlist that's called branding we would be in that one overall playlist? No, no, no. So you're, sorry, no, you're creating oh. your own channels playlist. It's your own channel. So you <laughs> could have, so if you go on Yellow Tuxedo's uh, YouTube channel, Yellow Tuxedo, uh, yeah, I can't think of what it was, YouTube dot forward slash lead forward slash Yellow Tuxedo. Um, you see our playlist, we've got our vlog, our how to's, um, other videos we're in, and then we've got playlists by social platforms. So there'd be a Twitter and Instagram and everything else. So if we did a video on how to download a Facebook Live to repurpose for YouTube, then that would appear in our Facebook uh, playlist and our YouTube playlist. And both of those descriptions are optimized to be found. You know, so. The good thing with playlists as well, even if you're not using uh, YouTube on a public level, if you are course creators or you have a, a mail and you want a, a certain amount of videos that your audience wants to see, you can share out that private link of a playlist so that, that they can watch yeah. video yeah. one, two, three, four, five, in the right order as the playlist yeah goes, yeah if you're, if you're selling it you know if you're going to sell that content and you've got a product on your website you want to make it as automated as possible and they buy that how to bake a cake I'm not being flippant but it did come across <laughs> flippant how to bake a cake then you can have that playlist step one two three four five and link to that playlist you're, you're, in the receipt yeah. you know there's Sorry, I'm sorry. That's, right. That's the first time I've interrupted them all day. So, uh, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's about guiding your audience through. So they get onto your channel, fantastic. They might find you on one video, but it's, it's like any, like, like your website, like anything else. You're guiding them yeah. through your channel so they can find out more. And they, it's much easier to find a playlist that they're engaging with to the next thing, to the next mm -hmm. thing, to the next thing. So you are guiding that journey. Yeah, interesting. So guys, you know, give, give us some bullet points advice on how we can really optimize our videos. So I'm about to post my video on YouTube. How do I optimize it? Okay, so there's a few things you need to do in, in you know, this kind of order as you're uploading it. Make sure you've got quality cover art that's, you know, good quality picture with a label on it that says exactly what it's about. Right. First one, cover up. Second one, the title. The title, you should have hopefully done some keyword research. Your title should be based around your keywords. You know, type what you're going to call it into YouTube and Google and see what's coming up. So if we use our bell term, how to put up a bell term, because people will type that into YouTube and to Google. So that's why our yeah, video is called that. Mm -hmm. uh, what we did on the end to slightly differentiate, we put in real time. So our differentiator, because we wanted that video to grow, was in real time, because every other video had been short. So cover up, title uh, with an intent, you know, people are, are wanting to know something. Um, then you've got description. Description is also keyword optimizable. So should repeat the title in some sentences plus some other kind of search terms. So uh, this is my bell tent. I show you how to put up a bell tent and you know other things like when you're cap glamping with your bell tent. So you've got glamping, bell tent and everything else. Yeah. Then there are also tags on the back end of a video. Tags are an elaboration of the title. So it could be how to put up a bell tent, 
how to take down a bell tent, how to set up a bell tent, how to put up a five meter bell tent, and as many different versions of it as possible. Um, and they are the kind of main things to do. And after you've done those, you need to jumpstart your video. So you need to share it out as far and wide as possible and get people to watch it. YouTube likes the first 48 hours. That's where they have a look what's going on. And if they see that traffic going to that video, then they start to put it up the rankings. Yeah. Okay, so you need to boost it during the first 48 hours. That's what you say. Yeah, but, that, but that's like all content. So if you yeah. post on Instagram, it's something like uh, six or 12 hours, I forget. And if you post on Facebook, it's similar times. If nothing happens within that time frame, it just falls off the mm -hmm. bottom, you know. When, when you don't tag your video, it's like not putting any hashtags on your Instagram posts. Yeah. It doesn't know where to place you. So you're, you, you could put an amazing video up, but no one would ever see it because you haven't done that tagging and optimization piece yeah. first. So, and it's real shame. You put so much effort into it. It's like, it could be the best work you have ever done and when you don't get eyes on it it's really yeah. you, you get you yeah. get quite despondent when you don't get a video yeah, yeah, yeah. um but but the good thing with youtube is that you do it once if it's not right you can go in and edit it again so if those tags aren't working for you there's nothing to say you can't go in and tweak yeah. and change and adapt tweak and adjust always tweak and adjust so we put this video out it was doing okay i was driving along one day and i went oh i can think about i didn't think about that search term for it went back added that into the tags and it started making it a bit higher and um, but it's so when you're doing your tags you wouldn't write let's say we're thinking of the lawn right you're not going to write grass lawn wow. trees sky plane wrong, <laughs> yeah because because that's too vague youtube yeah. wants to know where to put you so when you're starting out you need to start super niche and we're not talking millions of views here you don't need millions of views yeah. you know how many clients do you actually want or need hmm. so you don't Yes, we want millions of views, but you don't need millions of views. So when you're using your tags and your title and your description, keep it niche. So that's why ours is how to put up a five meter bell tent in real time. If we were not gonna be niche, it would just be called bell tent, but then it would probably just drop off the bottom because there's however million billion films with the word bell tent in. So it needs to know where to put you and niching down is a good way to start out. Yeah, be very specific. Yeah, great info because I think I've been doing our tags all wrong. <laughs> and I, if it I, helps, been, we did ours wrong to start with, yeah, and we learned the hard way, and that's now we share it and we show yeah. people how to do it to save time. Well, I've learned, that's amazing, uh, amazing advice here you've given us, guys. So, how do you know if we want to take our channel a little bit further? How do we go? Do you have any tricks on the trades or do's and don'ts on how we can maybe monetize our channel? Uh, I, I, unfortunately, I don't know if there's any tricks. It's hard work. Like most things, making money's you know it takes a bit of effort. Um, for monetize your, when you see these YouTubers earning millions off there, they've yeah. spent years and years and years consistently posting and growing a community, growing an audience. Um, to be able to monetize your YouTube channel directly with YouTube, you need a thousand subscribers and there's some other kind watch of hours, good, watch hours, something like that. And and that's that could. Take Take a long time to achieve now you could be super lucky and you take a month you jump on something pretty quickly and it grows and it's amazing and everything else mm -hmm. um, so if you're lucky we've got Paul haven't we our friend Paul does that yeah we've got a couple of friends one set up an electronic mountain bike channel uh, Rob Rides EMTB and another one set up historical railway channel so they were appealing to hobbies you know they, they weren't businesses they were hobbyists yeah. that's how they started mm -hmm. and theirs both grew very very, very quickly. quickly you know they mm -hmm. were they had to hit the thousand in a few months um whereas as a business answering questions i, I would expect it to take a bit longer, a bit longer. Now, other monetization routes might be sponsorship ads you know everything affiliate. else affiliate links and every, you know you mm. there's nothing wrong getting an amazon affiliate account and putting those links in the description and then using them in your blogs and vlogs and everywhere else so you know there's many ways of being actually able to monetize content um but it all relies on people seeing it and clicking on it. So concentrate on growing uh, before you start trying to sell on it straight away. I've got a quick, a quick question that just popped into my mind is, do you think it's a good idea to maybe collaborate with other local businesses so that are local to you, that you know also have their own uh, YouTube channel to, um, to collaborate and exchange and place ads in each other? Is that something that's 
Yeah, yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to jump in. Yeah, I wouldn't, I, I, I don't, uh, you know, yes, you can do the ad part or just simple collaboration to grow your audiences is probably... We all know the power of collaboration. Yeah. It doesn't matter what platform you're working on, be it, you know, a style shoot for a wedding or, or an Instagram, whatever you're doing, collaboration can only be a good thing. And I think if you can all help promote each other's videos and, and help push those videos, absolutely do that. Sure. Yes. Okay. Wow, this has been such an eye-opening chat. Thank you so much for all the information you've given us today. You can find out more about Emily and Alan's work on their own YouTube channel, which is of course at, on YouTube, just visiting Yellow Tuxedo. The link will be added at the end of this video. Do you guys have any other special deals or promotions you'd like to mention? Do you, or do you want to mention it? Do you want to mention it as I answer there? So we are just about to launch actually our brand new membership. <laughs> Come on, Emily, launch it, launch mode, go. <laughs> He's done so well for such a long time we today, did, just at the end. <laughs> um, we, um, so we have a, a few, obviously we, we love to practically show people how to do it for themselves and we love explaining those technical bits. And we're just about to launch our new membership, which is um, basically... <laughs> just launch it, go. The, the, the digital circus. Obviously, Yellow Tuxedo is all about the man in the yellow suit. Yeah. Um, well, no, it's not about me. It's, it's um, comes and from it's that. a really good program where we every month we're going to be showing people another practical element of how to be basically the, their own ringmasters of their own of their own audience. So it, it might be about how to use tags properly. It might be about how to generate um, that that buzz around your own your own product, your own yeah. service. So we're going to do that. That's coming out at the end of the month. It is. It's very exciting. We're going to take people on yeah. a journey to grow their online presence. It's going to be about collaboration. It's going to be about working together. But it's going to be us sharing everything we know about everything seo social media you know youtube creation everything we are sharing in the digital circus the digital circus Ooh, for any small business out there we all know that it can be quite a tough journey sometimes to make sure that our products and our services are uh, seen in all different types of platform and obviously youtube clearly seems like a cost effective way to showcase your product and and your services and build your brand awareness Emily, uh, Alan, thank you very much both for being on the show. It's been fantastic having you guys here. Um, good luck with all three of your businesses. Good luck with the launch of your new program, which will be The Digital record. Circus. The Digital Circus. Thanks, guys. Olivia Tam, it's been a pleasure chatting with you today. I want to thank you for having us on. Oh, wow, what, what wonderful guests. Thank you, Alan, and to Emily. Thank you both. So to our viewers, make sure you all join us next Monday as we welcome our next special guest, who is Andy Wood from Pulsate. Andy will be talking to us about how to use video and podcasts to boost your brand visibility. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah, so make sure you join us again next Monday. Do whatever it takes to be with us. You know, become a fan. Subscribe to our YouTube channel because we all need a little bit of boost when we're launching something new. So, so go and have a look at our videos, subscribe, and, um, and make sure you be with us every Monday morning. And don't forget to be visible. Bye for now. Bye. Bye.